Welcome in, everybody. Game two of day two here at Emerald Coast Classic. You've got the McNeese Cowboys from Louisiana coming in at three and three. And the Sanford Bulldogs from Birmingham, Alabama, four and one. This is going to be a good matchup. Game six here for the Emerald Coast Classic. I'm Blake White alongside is my partner Essex Rhodes and our production staff here at Emerald Coast TV, R.J. Murdoch and company. We're brought to you by The Island on The Island. Check out theislandfl.com to book your stay and reservations. We're about to get tip-off here for game two. This is going to be a good one. Watch out for the quick guard play of Quez Glover for the Bulldogs and the big man you see here in the middle, 35, Medley Bacon for the Cowboys. And McNeese brings in the ball to start. And right on cue, they get it to the big guy, but Jermaine Marshall there to dig down low and come up with the interception. Now remember, we saw McNeese yesterday have a lot of energy coming out from their bench from the head coach, Coach John Aiken. And here we're gonna see A quick foul that's going to lead to the Bulldogs having the ball on the McNeese bench sideline. Jacob Tryon, the big 6'11 senior from California. <clears throat> Be a good matchup between him and Brendan Medley Bacon down low. Mm. 
offense is turned up right now. McNeese brings some energy. They've got a good crowd here. Their bench is very loud. He just swarmed Glover and created the turnover. Here's Miles Lewis trying to drive in. Kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor finds Lewis in the on the wing. He knocks down a three and points right at their bench. Boom. That was an interesting looking shot. The big man goes straight up. Causes problems in the middle. Wesley Pardet can't get the ball to fall. And you're going to see the McNeese bench every single hustle play that is given. They are up cheering for the five guys on the floor. Lots of energy from this group. <clears throat> mm, fighting down low. Yep, oh. foul's going to go against Miles Lewis. They were trying to create space, and Lewis just wrapped up with Tryon. Here's a quick trigger mm. shot from wow. Cooper Kafis. And on the rebound, Tryon gets called with the foul. Defensive effort from Marshall, taps it out of bounds. Yes, McNeese is staying Satan how he crossed the line. He was across the line, the ref didn't blow the whistle on it. Now you see Marshall talking to Taylor. Sanford showing a full court press, man press. Jonathan Macy with the ball at the top of the key. Swings it over to Lewis. Lewis drives, swings it back to Macy. Seven on the shot clock. Good ball movement around as Taylor shoots a three and gets it to go. That's back-to-back -back threes for the Cowboys. Yesterday we saw Sanford come out hot shooting the threes. Right now the Cowboys are up 6-0. Here's Quez Glover. He was perfect on the day from the line yesterday, going 13 for 13. He's going to take another trip to the line now. That was about to be my statement, Coach. The job for <clears throat> defensively, McNeese, who's going to step up and keep Glover out of the lane? He's very adamant about his penetration game. Yesterday they had a hard time trying to stay in front of him. Let's see who's going to step up today for McNeese. Will it be a team effort? Or do they have one person that can stay in front of Quez Glover? Quez getting checked out. I think Coach McMillan wants to make sure he's all right from the fall he took penetrating the lane. Knocks down both free throws. Still perfect here in Niceville. Deflected by Cooper. Macy dances with him at the top of the key and then finds Lewis where it gets tipped out, 10 on the shot clock. It's five seconds? Nope, foul call. Oh. This is gonna go against Tryon. And that's two fouls on the big man early in the ball game. Jeez. So he's going to come sit for a while. That's going to change up the whole philosophy on the Sanford side. That's and two fouls and 226. And gives the advantage now to oh, the travel. Cowboys. Travel. It was a travel. Medley Bacon called for the travel. He was getting a little pushed in the back, but 
just couldn't keep his balance. <clears throat> Sanford has a full, full cross set, trying to get the ball up. Defensively, McNeese comes out on the man. Oh, good skip pass, finds Marshall in the corner. He throws up a three, can't get it to go. Rebounded by Taylor. Here's a deep shot from Francois hit mm, a big three. In, hit a big three yesterday in the game. Did Francois can't hit this one? No. Stepped on the line. <laughs> Glover checks back in for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have a four across set up here as they break the press from McNeese. Early sign already, Coach. I'm watching McNeese lackadaisical about getting back defensively. Good defensive effort from the Cowboys here, though. <clears throat> if Sanford would look up and push the ball, they have an opportunity to get the ball in the bucket early. Get a chance to get McNeese with a foul situation. So many different options. But you have to be willing to take advantage of every opportunity. Tough shot coming in and a late foul call. Miles Lewis takes it in from the baseline around two Bulldogs. Drops his first free throw. Sanford two, McNeese seven right now. 16-31 left in this first half. Rebounded by Marshall. He was the leading rebounder for the Bulldogs yesterday. Double-digit rebounds. Mm. Glover mishandles, but then recovers. Fires up a jump shot. He gets it to go. Glover is just so efficient. Back door. And a jam there from Lewis. Miles Lewis running the floor. I told you, if they take advantage of getting the ball up the court with fast pace, both teams are slow getting back. Early in the game, they're both slow getting back down on defense. Well, good first five, four minutes of play here has gone by. The energy level for McNeese is high right now and they're riding a nine to four lead. We're gonna take a quick break. You're watching the Emerald Coast Classic on Emerald Coast TV. Watching Emerald Coast TV. We'd like to thank our sponsor, The Island. 
the islandfl.com to book your hotel reservations. And you see our group here, Blake White. To my right is Essex Rhodes. To my left over here is RJ Murdoch, the man behind the curtain. He's putting on the whole production staff. And we've got baby Murdoch over there too, right? On the camera. Maxwell Murdoch, the mad scientist that brings you all the amazing camera action angles. We appreciate all of our staff. We appreciate our sponsors for allowing us to bring this game to you right now. Samford down four to nine on McNeese. McNeese bringing that energy that Coach Aiken wants to see. But Sanford knocking down the shots that Coach McMillan wants to see. That's Jaden Campbell for three. Mm. There's Lewis driving the baseline, gets around his man, but can't get it to fall, stays with it, and then is fouled by Wesley Cardet. See the hustle here, just the determination to continue with it. Miles Lewis is just able to get around his man effortlessly today. I want to say this is his second or third reversal attempt. So he's gotten quite acquainted with that baseline. We spoke on it earlier in the previous game. Closing the middle, checking people that's cutting through the lane and securing that baseline for the backdoor cut. There's a fumble by Jaden Campbell, and it's intercepted by the Cowboys. Lewis attacks the goal. Nice pass from Kellen Taylor. And the missed shot is rebounded by the Cowboys. Ooh. And sliding through the lane. Jaden Campbell gets undercut. The foul was beforehand on number 11, Marcellus Vale, who has checked in. Lewis drives mm. and gets it to fall. Lewis I'm seeing, is feeling his game right I was going to say, I'm seeing Lewis today taking a lot of shots to the rim. Feel like he's able to get past his man. Oh, and he's there for the help. Tipped out by Marshall, rebounded by Cooper Kafis. Oh. There's Campbell inside. Campbell with a nice roll, turn around, he's right at the bucket. Movement. Movement creates opportunities. Mm. Nice backdoor cut from Lewis, taking it to the rim again. Didn't get the call on the foul, but gets the call here on the baseline. And then a whole new four checks in. Coach, the first thing about that was Francois cut baseline, did not get checked cutting through. Then Lewis came right behind him. We've been talking about checking the cutters on that backside all night long, or all day long, excuse me. Five on the shot clock. And it's a shot clock violation. Medley Bacon just couldn't get around Marshall. I think that may create a, a little bit of false sense of uh, hope defensively. Bacon just wasn't able to get the ball up in time. I don't think that they were really going to stop him. There's Vale on the drive. He stops, swings it around to Campbell. <clears throat> Finds Vale back down to Marshall in the short corner. I like how Bacon uses his length to cover two people. Campbell shoots a deep three in the corner, rebounded by Vale. Oh, now Glover 
he can't get it to go from the top of the key. Marshall trying to keep that ball saved with the Bulldogs, but it is rebounded oh. by the Cowboys charge. instead. And now we're going to have a charge call as Glover sacrifices his body, and the foul is going to go against Christian Shoemate. Now, Coach, that's two stops. Two stops by Sanford. Really that McNeese kind of gave up. Out of control right there. Got called with the charge, the turnover. And on that last one, the shot clock violation. You got to talk on those screens. You got to let your man know there's a screen coming. Awkward looking three there from Cardet. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded Cowboys. They're Look going up. quick on their transition game. And a shot from TJ Moss. Too strong here and rebounded by the Bulldogs. Moss, who came in shooting in the second half yesterday, was on fire. He didn't get to play much in the first half for foul trouble. Here's Jaron really just drops Moss off in the mouth. Mm. Intercepted by the Bulldogs. Bad entry pass in the first place. Glover again. And he's pointing at Medley Bacon. Smallest guy on the floor pointing to the biggest guy on the floor. Oh, and they didn't That's call fine. it. That's why. He wanted it on Medley Bacon, but they called it on TJ Moss. They want to get the big fella out of there. Mm -hmm. That's their game plan. Sanford looking at it like you've already got our big man in foul trouble. We got to try to return the favor. Take the height advantage out of this game. Glover again sinking the free throws. Still perfect from the line. I like the full court defense from the Bulldogs here. That leads to a transition dunk. Shoemate, a great effort too on the pass from the big fella Medley Bacon. Oh wow! You see, great transition game, and then the hustle here. McNeese is working together. If you notice, Coach, that's the, the second time the length of the big fella has affected two players in one area. We spoke about it earlier: spacing, spacing, spacing. You have to keep enough space that one play, one person can't play two people. If you are so close that one defender can control two offensive players, you don't have proper spacing. Backdoor cut. Oh, thought he was going to finish that, but it's Shoemate again. Off the glass, not a dunk. Moss trying to create problems up top. Nice defense by McNeese right now. They're not allowing the Bulldogs to... The limit of the big fella. Yep. Vail, seven on the shot clock, really has to throw something up. And diving all over the place are these McNeese Cowboys, and it's going to stay the way of the Bulldogs. We've got a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout as well. You're watching game six of the Emerald Coast Classic on Emerald Coast TV, 1914 McNeese.
some of the McNeese fans here in attendance. Had some good crowds in this arena last night. Packed arena for the LSU Penn State, Oregon State Wake Forest games. You'll see the championship game later this evening. That'll be LSU versus Wake Forest tonight at 6 o'clock. We're also going to do the Penn State versus Oregon State game for you at 3 o'clock. So we hope you stay and join us for that right here on Emerald Coast TV. Deflected off, off of a cowboy, off the ref, so it's going to stay Bulldog basketball. Straight to the bucket. Maybe. Into Luke. the big man's chest. Exactly Hardette. what you want to do. Hardet loses it. Out of bounds, and it's going to go to McNeese. Got Tryon back in the game with his two fouls. Yeah, they got trying to defend the bigs. I like that. Just throw it on up, let the big guy go get it. Coach, I would either go with that or have the big make the inbound pass. He has yeah. the vision, he can see over everything. Or, like you said, if you have him standing on the inbound, just throw it up and he can go get it. Travel. Yeah, right in front of the Sanford bench. They wanted it, but they didn't get the call. Everybody saw it except the guys in the stripes, the ones that matter. Here's a deep three short. That's short from Shoemate. He's been hot of late for the Cowboys, but not this time. What's the old adage, coach? The ball doesn't lie. And missed the travel, and McNeese comes up. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. That was an off-ball no, foul, foul, apparently, too. And it's going to go against oh, wow. Medley Bacon, who was defending. So we have both bigs with two fouls. Jacob Tryon, and he's going to head to the line now. Now the question is, how will Sanford try to take advantage of them having the height advantage right now? Will they go inside to the big? Trying too much on that second shot. Warren skies for that rebound there on the missed free throw. Oh, Ooh, yep, travel, that yes. time that was a travel. I felt like he should have shot that first one. Yeah, he did the fake, just come the right back and pull the trigger. You see Tryon gets subbed out. So both teams going with a smaller lineup. Glover taking it all the way to the short corner, kicking it around to Vale mm. to Cooper. Kafis knocks down the three for the Bulldogs. Approaching 10 minutes of the first half. It is an 18-19 game. McNeese holding oh, on to wow. a one-point lead. Nice little fake there from Colin Warren, but too much on the shot. It's rebounded by the Bulldogs as we come up the other way. There's the slightest little fake that Warren gave and lost every defender. Still tie up as they continue to fight through it through the whistle. Marshall got on the ground for that loose ball as it was fumbled out of the hands of Vale. Whole new four coming in from McNeese. 
See the scramble here on the replay. Vail fumbled it as it was tipped out from Zach Scott. Marshall gets on the ground and retains that possession for Sanford. Excuse me. Jump ball went way of McNeese, so it'll be McNeese ball. Sanford's applying the full court pressure. Jonathan Macy just tossed it. I think they were on a different pages there. And it's into the hands of the Bulldogs. And Macy's going to be called for a foul on the other end. That's something I don't like to see, Coach. A player turns the ball over and then on the other end commits a foul. Commit the fouls. So that's two bonehead mistakes. And it, I, mean, I, yeah. I know what they're trying to do. They want to make up for their mishap. But you don't want to compound your first mistake with the second. The silly foul trying to get the ball back. Just give up the two points, come back down, set up something, and get your, your get back throughout the game. Stay within the flow of the game. There's no, never a need to force anything. Glover stays perfect again. Now six for six from today from the line. Sanford now has taken a one-point lead. McNeese offense kind of gone stale. Trying to hope Moss can hit this, and he does. Moss comes back alive. And on the other end, Jaden Campbell knocks down the three for the Bulldogs. McNeese is having problems trying to find someone who can stay in front of Glover. Coach, at that point, you have to look at it like, I don't need to take the ball. All I want to do is stay in front of my man and slow him down. Ah, and off the knee. Unforced turnover of Trey English. Trey English commits a foul on the other end. That's what we were just talking about, Coach. Compounding the, the mistakes. And that's foul number, the number nine. Number nine for McNeese, number one for Trey English. Jaden Campbell at the line. Bulldog shot almost 80, almost 90 percent yesterday from the free throw line. 87 percent. Right now, 8:39 left in the game, and they're one in the first half. And they're one foul away from the double bonus. Ah, oh, travel, travel call on Miles Lewis. I thought that was going to be a reach-in foul on Cooper Kafis. Well, the team comparison right now, Coach, you have McNeese shooting 8 for 15 at the, from the field, 53%. You have Sanford, 6 for 16, 36%. That ball almost came all the way up here to us. Points off of turnovers. They're both sitting with eight points off turnovers. Got some of the fans getting involved now. Shout out to... Coach Grant Sr. there on the grab of the ball. Glover, mm. nice ball movement around from the Bulldogs. Gave up a couple of open passes, but Cooper Kafis gets it back. Swing Can't the get ball. It to go. Have Marshall, scrambling. strong rebound. Best rebounder so far we've seen the last two days, Coach, has been this kid right here, Jermaine Marshall. He just is a magnet to the ball. He plays so strong. The 6'6 guard from Hueytown, Alabama. Mm. Now we're going to take a quick break ourselves. Sanford's now got the lead on McNeese, 26-22.
You're watching Emerald Coast TV. Welcome back to game number six of the Emerald Coast Classic 2021 here on the campus of Northwest Florida State in Niceville, Florida. I'd like to thank the island on Okaloosa Island for sponsoring our broadcast this, these two days. Theislandfl.com. Book your stay and your reservations now. Come join us on the beach. Coach, right now we have Sanford on a 6-0 run in the last 46 seconds. And then McNeese State with four turnovers in the last 335. So you're averaging a turnover a minute almost. Well, a lot of it has been some unforced things, but Sanford trying to speed McNeese up to make those errors. And thus far, it's been working. We always talk about the turnover numbers, trying to keep it under 20. Right now, eight minutes left in the first half, and McNeese already with 10 turnovers. Trey English with a miss here, and it bounces out of bounds. Warren can't track it down. I'm sorry, Taylor can't track it down. So right now, looking at the numbers, McNeese with 10 turnovers and seven assists. More turnovers and assists, it's not good. You're in the red. Glover, mm. deep shot over. Taylor can't get it to go. Rebounded by the Cowboys. I like how these young fellas are skying for these rebounds. Miles Lewis again attacking the paint. That's where they've had a lot of their success today is Lewis attacking the rim. And it's working here. Another quick shot from Glover. It's the first person I've seen that has had Glover missing a bit on his shot. I, don't, I can't just say that was all Lewis, but that was the first person I've seen stay in front of him and make it a difficult look. Warren bringing the ball up for the Cowboys. We got a hand check. Him. Yep. Grab him. Should go against Quinn Ritchie. Ritchie hit buckets for him yesterday, didn't he? He did. Came off the bench, knocked down a couple of threes. Picking up the foul here, though, and that'll be Samford's seventh foul. Kellen Taylor going to head to the line for the Cowboys and shoot a one and one Gets it, both of them to fall. Strong defense by Warren on really high screen from Tryon. Trying to get the ball around to 
from Matre. Nice defensive effort. Although McNeese has their back turned to the offside man. They wanted to travel there. Don't get it. Richie's stuck on the baseline. Now it's in the corner with five seconds. They find Tryon. Finds really Quinn Richie in the corner Off. as the shot clock expires. Can't get it to go, and it's rebounded by Cardet, who's fouled and will head to the line. And that foul's on number 12, Kellen Taylor. That'll be his first, but the team's 10th foul. Taylor falling asleep on the backside, let Cardet slide right in front of him, getting the rebounding position. He had to commit the foul to keep him from getting the bucket. Cardet making both of them count. Moss got it for three. Deep corner. Moss is doing what he seems to do. Every time McNeese hits a three. Oh, yes. Good call here. Charge. Colin Warren. Warren sliding his feet. Taking one for the team. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Called from the Bulldogs. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Every time McNeese has hit a three, Coach, right in front of that Sanford bench, they turn around and say something to him. Yes. It's a tie game right now, but I just wonder if that's going to come into play later on in this game as you see the replay here from Colin Warren taking that charge. And, Coach, you were speaking about talking to the bench. It seems to be Moss each time. He dropped his first three and turned right around and pointed directly at the bench. There is a lot of extra co communication going on between the teams. I don't mind it, but are you going to be able to back it up? You just got to keep it basketball. You can't make it personal. That's when you start trying to do too much. The one-on-ones and you want to do everything, take it all to the rack yourself. You got to utilize your teammates. We said this was going to be a tight, contested ball game. So far, so mm. good on that script as it's Teams in the bonus. Here's a quick shot from Cooper Kafis. Can't get it to fall. Warren drives in. Little acrobatic layup that's too hard off the glass. Cooper gave up another one. Kicks it back out to Glover. Glover swings it around to Campbell. Campbell gets around his man. Nice little nice cross. <coughs> floater inside the lane. He gets it to fall. Sanford has a two-point lead. Good move there by Short by Warren as he got the defender in the air to create space for the shot, but the shot came up way short. For a big man, Tryon has 
pretty good handles. They they use him up at the top of the key a lot. Cause I, was, I was just thinking about that. When he went up to get the ball right there, as him being the big man, there's no need for me to go way out there to follow him. And Campbell, or right on cue here, Tryon gets the rebound from Campbell's missed shot, and he puts it in for two. Right in the middle. It's a free throw. Yeah, he should have shot it. Lewis continues his drive-in game today and continues to work for him. <clears throat> Lewis right now, six for eight from the field. Ooh, nice. I like how he used that pivot he got, foot. He's got the first base stretch there going on as Quest Glover, and it leads to a Marshall attacking the, the lane here you see on the replay and getting the foul call. He's going to go shoot free throws <clears throat> when we come back from our media timeout. It's 32-30, a close one here in game six. Welcome back. We'd like to thank the island, FL.com, on the island for their sponsorship. Planning on taking a vacation, why don't you think about coming on down to Okaloosa Island. Check out the island. They have a great pool, great scenery. Located in between great shopping areas. Come on down and check out the Panhandle of Florida, the island on Okaloosa Island. Yeah, we don't have snow here, but we do have a white beach. So if you want to get away from the cold, this is the place to do it. Checking the weather right now. Outside it is 63 degrees and sunny. Coach, I have to say, 60 degrees in Florida is not the same 60 degrees <laughs> up north. That is true. Here is Jermaine Marshall at the line to finish his play here. We'll see if he can make the second one and keep Sanford hot from the line. It's, they're 11 of 13 from the line as a team. <clears throat> shooting 85%, excuse me, 12 of 14, shooting 85%. Interior. And McNeese is going to have to be able to finish when they get the ball inside. Nice skip pass by Glover. Campbell One fires slam. it up, can't get it to go, but gets his own rebound and kicks it down to Tryon, who gets it off the glass. Oh. Trying to force the issue, McNeese turns it over. And again, you got Glover. Tough shot by Glover, but it's rebounded by Marshall who gets it off the glass. It's the rebound magnet, is it not? Mm -hmm. Now the Bulldogs are up by eight. All that energy that the bench and McNeese had in the beginning of this half is now all transferred over to the Bulldogs as they have another interception and another turnover from the Bulldogs, but it's right back to the Cowboys, and that might get them going. It's Christian Shoemate. Well, that bucket right there stops a 6-0 run that Sanford had went on. 32-38, 2.45 left in the first half. 
Sanford with the backdoor cut. It's Campbell with the bucket going to the line. Sanford right now seem to be more disciplined getting the results that they need. With Glover at the helm, I think uh, Coach McMillan doesn't have so much to worry about being able to trust your point guard. And he plays pretty solid defense at that. And just as I speak on it, Glover gets called with the foul. A little wraparound, too tight on the ball handler there. Both teams are now in the double bonus for the rest of the half. Both teams are shooting very well from free throw. Bulldogs 13 of 15 shooting 87%. And McNeese now six of seven. Trying to make it seven for eight. Free throws are the majority of the points from both of these teams. Mm. Cooper oh. Kafis will struggle down there being guarded by Francois. Gets it to Marshall. Marshall sells that foul call very well. And he's going to go to the line. And Shoemate is going to pick up another foul. Coach Marshall is one of those players that the young, young players should watch. You don't see him crying and looking for a foul. If he does get fouled, he tries to continue through the play. That's something that we have to deal with. When our kids get fouled or they feel like it's a foul, they want to turn around and look for the referees or hold their hands up. You got to be able to play through contact, guys. Ladies also. If you don't hear the whistle, you got to continue play. And learn ways to sell it like Marshall did there. He came in and continued his composure, which allows him to get to the foul line and allows the Bulldogs to continue to shoot 88%, 15 of 17 now from the line. Francois almost dropped the ball out of bounds here. Instead, gets it down to Kellen Taylor, who hits a nice little jump shot. 43-36 is your score right now with 90 seconds left in this first half. It's been a tight, contested ball game. Good basketball all around, too. Glover. Drops it down to Marshall. Marshall just weaves his way around underneath the goal and gets it to go off the glass. Marshall having an, an excellent game thus far in the first half for the Bulldogs. Right now, Marshall three for three from the field on the last three shots. Oh, yes, travel. Travel call again on McNeese. We saw the gate too wide open. He's trying to hurry up and drive on through. Put the ball on the floor first, young man. That is the number one concept of basketball. You got to put the ball on the floor. If not, we'd be playing football. Here's a deep shot oh. from Wesley Cardet. Great pass from Quest Glover. That's his first three out of three attempts. Cardet. Bulldogs now have extended their lead to 12. Right now they're comfortably in charge. Here's Francois on the wing. He answers. And oh, gets, good and then a steal. steal. Oh, and nice a strong D. block by Campbell. Good D on both sides of the ball for both teams. Cardet drives in and he turns the ball over again. Oh. And Warren will turn Sloppy the ball away. Above the rim. Wes Glover misses, gets his own rebound, nice and pass. dumps it off to Campbell. Nice pass. Five seconds oh. left in the half. And then we got a foul Glover call on Glover. With the silly foul. And the last 50 seconds of this game have been just backyard basketball. 
Got to do better taking care of the ball, guys. Just when you think Samford can pull away and go into the locker room with a nice bit of momentum, you give McNeese the chance to cut it down to single digits. Massey's going to have two shots here. He knocks the first one down to make it a 10-point game. As you see on your screen, it's 2.9 seconds left in this first half. <clears throat> Plenty of time to still get one shot off. Massey misses. Mm. Tough rebound from Marshall. I think the clock got off a little late, really throws it up. Can't, it's way too strong. But the score at halftime right now, Sanford up 10, 50 to 40. McNeese is going to have to clean up some of their game if they want to come back and have a shot at this in the second half. And we'll be back in 15 minutes as well. You're watching game six of the 2021 Emerald Coast Classic.
We welcome you back to Raider Arena. Start of the second half, Sanford 50, McNeese 40. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, theislandfl.com. Planning on taking a vacation? Book your vacation at the island on Okaloosa Island. McNeese already coming out hot with a turnover on the defensive end. Now trying to get a bucket here from Francois. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Medley Bacon. And the shot clock resets. Ooh. Aggressive penetration. Massey going to the rack. Gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And Jacob Tryon trying to figure out why he got fouled. I am too. The big guy just put his arms up. <clears throat> Those are tough calls. chip away at the Bulldogs lead. Now have it down to eight. Glover to Tryon, Tryon to Marshall, up and under, and Marshall gets it to go again. No answer from McNeese on stopping Jermaine Marshall. Or anybody from Sanford cutting baseline on that matter. Bulldog from Hewitt Town, Alabama. I wonder if he's wearing crimson or navy blue today for the Iron Bowl coming up at 2.30. I'm sure he grew up one of those fans. Hmm. There's a tough turnaround. Tough bucket by Taylor. Again, we start the second half. No one checking the cutters, cutting through the lane. The other thing is, Coach, they're not checking it on defense, but the offense is having a difficult time finding them. Mm. Here's a nice touch shot off the high glass from Miles Lewis. So they're trying to chip away, Coach. I McNeese mean, got it back down to six right now. This was the game plan. From Coach Aiken, come out with a lot of energy. I say slow and steady wins the race. Oh, here's an interception from Macy. And Macy slams it home. Somebody has to rotate. Cooper Casey. Kasif. Kafis. Sorry about that. Oh, Can't find bad it. pass. And then Francois trying to get a little too much and throws it out of bounds. Coach, in that situation right there, I understand you have the two-on-one, but you want to be able to get a bucket every time you get the ball. In that situation, come to a jump stop, give a pass fake, shot fake, get the defender, get the defender to move, excuse me. Excuse me, get the defender to move and possibly get him to commit a foul. Here's Cooper Kafis. Can't get it to go, follows his own shot, finds Glover on the wing, and he gets it to go for the Bulldogs. Back on fire goes Glover. That'll Deep cancel the, the scoring drought. There's a two minute scoring drought for Sanford. Right now on the offensive end, McNeese hitting the last three of their field goals. An interesting Here's Wesley Cardet getting the rebound. He dances around with Lewis mm. and loses the ball. 
No charge foul there either. Slow it down, set it up. Slow it down and set something up. I just you cannot yep. rush or force it when you happen to get the turnover. It was off of Kellen Taylor there. You gotta capitalize on every possession when you're behind. There's so much yelling going on from the McNeese bench. I'm not sure who's telling what to do. <laughs> but hey, as long as the McNeese players know who the coaches are trying to tell something to. That's all that matters. We're on the outside looking in. Oh. Trying to no. do too much again. Medley Bacon gets the steal and tosses it out of bounds. I Coach. think they see they see what could be before it happens. They get so excited and they just fumble the ball out. So we just spoke about McNeese hitting three of the last three possessions. Right now it's three turnovers in the last 40, 145. But we're going to take a quick break. You're watching game six, 55-48. Sanford is up. Back to you here from Raider Arena at the campus of Northwest Florida State College in Niceville, Florida. You're watching game six of the Emerald Coast Classic 2021. Sanford Bulldogs 55, McNeese Cowboys 48. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, The Island on Okaloosa Island. Book your stay a reservation at theislandfl.com. So, so far, Coach, in the second half, we've seen McNeese try and bring their aggressive play back, but it's been warranted by some of the miscues from their own blunders. Well, Coach, they're, they're able to create turnovers, but once they get the turnover, get on their half of the court, they're not able to finish with it. Right now, Sanford has 13 turnovers with McNeese with 17 turnovers. Points off those turnovers, though. Sanford with 20 points off turnovers. McNeese, 14 points off of turnovers. Just not able to capitalize as McNeese when they do get the turnovers. Right now, McNeese is in a scoring drought. The last 215. Nice pass here to Medley oh. Bacon. He gets fouled and he's gonna head, head to the line. Medley Bacon not really getting into the flow of <coughs> the game thus far. Still a goose egg points wise. Maybe he can get in the scoring column here with some free throws and he does. Sometimes all it takes is you to see the ball go through the bucket. Give him two points. Medley Bacon, the seven foot one center. He's played 11 minutes, two points at the free throw line. Yeah, the Bulldogs doing a great job of taking him away. Talking about that yesterday, Cowboys game plan is to get the ball inside as many times as they can. <clears throat> and with Jacob Tryon, out on the bench, Bacon is, needs to uh, take advantage as best he can. 
Mm. Right now, McNeese turns the defense back up. Good job. Great decision right there. Warren drives mm. and then gives the ball right back up. Cardet finding Lobick on the wing, and he shoots it too high. TJ Moss knocking down the tray. <coughs> and then a scramble. Defense for a loose comes ball back alive. Here. McNeese trying to tie it here on this possession. Ah, Taylor trying to do a no look pass. Again, stick to the fundamentals. You've gotten yourself right back in this game. You don't want to give the Bulldogs a chance to increase the lead. Really rattles in and out on that three. And a timeout taken by I believe McNeese. Thirty second. Well, it was a timeout taken by McNeese. We're going to take a quick break ourselves. Here's a word from the island. We'll be right back. Watching Emerald Coast TV, we're bringing you game six of the 2021 Emerald Coast Classic. We'd like to thank the island on Okaloosa Island for being our sponsor through all this. McNeese has cut the lead down to two. Right now, they're, McNeese, McNeese is able to get back in the game due to Sanford's struggles. Right now, they are one for the last seven shots. They have five turnovers in the last five minutes. They have not scored in the past three minutes. These are part of the reasons why McNeese is able to get back into this game. Five on the shot clock. Warren mm -hmm. drives in too hard. Medley Bacon tries to rebound too much. Oh, no. <clears throat> then we're going to have a up and down Probably. call on Shoemaker. Full court pressure from the Cowboys. Really tries to save it. Doesn't go off the foot of TJ Moss. He keeps it. Shoemate pulls it out, top of the three, and gets it to go. That actually, I'm going to blame the guy who threw the ball in for the Bulldogs on that one. He just kind of forced it, made really try to make a play. Here's the big boy, Tryon. He, we saw him knock one of those down yesterday. He can shoot. And we were talking about it earlier. Pulls out, and he's got the handles. Tryon ends the 14-0 run for McNeese. Moss gets his man up in the air with the shot fake. Marshall is limping right now. 
in some pain, and he's going down to the floor. You got a knee? He wears a knee brace on his left. Right now, he's feeling his, his right. Is that the hamstring? Looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. That's going to be a major loss here for the Bulldogs if he can't come back. He seems to be a magnet for the ball when it comes off the rim. It almost looked like you see the replay here. He got hit as the ball handler went in. You, you slowly, you can kind of see it right here. I don't know if he got landed on or I'm not sure what it was, but he just, after the play, went right down to the floor. And you see, see him on the floor still off to the side. Brought him some water. Could just be a cramp. But he did get the foul call. That was his first. Sanford's third of the, of the half. And at the line is Moss shooting for the Cowboys. Too strong on the second shot. Rebounded by Campbell. Mm. Dangerous cross-court pass, but it's still saved. Cooper Kafis, a couple of pump fakes on the shot. Good defense by the Cowboys. You can hear it from their bench. Glover throws up a shot. Now, he did this yesterday, too. This will be the third time in two days that he's going to go to the line to shoot three free throws. And to me, Coach, he, he's not trying to get it. No, he's going for the foul. He, he jumps straight up. And because I believe his stature is so small, the defender has his arm in the air, so he just jumps into the arm, and he gets those foul calls. Great little strategy there, and he's, again, perfect from the line, seven for seven now. I was going to say, Coach, when you're shooting like that from the line, you do whatever it takes to get to the free throw line. But it's not one of these James Harden flop in twos that you see in the NBA. He just goes straight up, and normally defenders are right there at his hand. Like you say, because of his size, it's kind of a disadvantage for the defenders. And I think what's happening right now, the officials are going to look to see if it was a three-point attempt. That was pretty quick, I Stay believe. Two. Yeah, this is not a timeout. Both teams went over to their benches, though, so the officials could get the call right. Two-shot foul. It is a two-shot foul. So I guess his lead foot was touching the black line. Oh, no, they were saying two more shots. So this is the second of the three. It was a three-point okay. attempt. And now here is the third shot for Glover. Again, three in a row. Glover has not missed a free throw while he's been in this arena. Now nine for nine for today, 13 of 13 yesterday. You want to make a living, you can do it from the foul line when there is no buddy in your face. Lost from deep. But making a three here with pressure. TJ Moss coming alive in the second half. Oh, Campbell looking like a running back getting through the hole there on his way to the rim. Did he get an extra step I on that? I think so. He definitely carried, cradled that ball. He hit that three hole kind of nice, did he not? He did. Ooh, TJ Moss got away with a just kind of like a walk-through pick on Campbell. One more, one more yeah, pass. TJ was hot. That was a bad pass there by Taylor. Good look, good look. Now they have Warren on the wing, and Warren knocks it down. Assist from Moss. 
And just like that, back. we've got a 63-63 tie ball game. Glover going back to doing what he does, get back inside that lane, go to the line. We're gonna have a media timeout on the floor. We're all tied up here in Niceville, Florida at 63. And here's a word from our sponsor, The Island. Thank you for watching Emerald Coast TV as we bring you game six of the 2021 Emerald Coast Classic here on the campus of Northwest Florida State College Raider Arena in Niceville, Florida. We appreciate the island on Okaloosa Island being our sponsor. And you're just joining us. This has been a back and forth game. Sanford has had the lead for the majority of it, but McNeese has come roaring back here in the second half to tie it at 63. A lot of it has to do with the tough inside play from Miles Lewis. He leads all Cowboys with 18, but TJ Moss has been hot too, knocking down three threes. Mm. Here's Tryon. a quick bucket from Jacob Tryon. Coach, when McNeese doesn't have the height on the floor, that's exactly what you have to do. You have Tryon, 6'11". Just throw it up, get it to the rim. Oh, five. yep, yes. With five on the shot clock. <clears throat> Zach Scott getting called for the offensive foul. Trying to make a move. Roll to the goal. Man, if he yes. had Tryon had put him on his back and rolled, that would have been two points right there. Instead, it's going to lead to a Bulldog turnover. Right there, Coach, that's the perfect example of what I was speaking about. Looking for calls, crying to the referees. Right there, there was a grab on the arm. That's why the ball was, the, the possession was lost. That created the turnover. It grabbed him as he cut through the lane, trying to drive through the lane and make the pass. Instead of crying for the foul, you have to hustle and go get the ball. Glover up playing tight defense. Good screen by oh Medley Bacon, and then it's tipped. It's off of Lewis. Off of Lewis out of bounds, and it'll be Bulldog ball. <laughs> Seeing one of the tunnels, the Oregon State Beaver players getting ready for our 3 o'clock game. And on um, Here's the tip off the Bulldogs, and it's going to go back to McNeese. 65-63, 9.47 left in the contest. Right now, discipline is about to play a major factor. Major factor. Oh, nice little hook shot. Taylor inside gets it to drop. Tied up these, again. They got to watch the skip side. Got to watch the skip. Close it. 
Here's Campbell for three. In and out. Marshall's back in. I was just about to say, your, your rebound magnet. Yeah, slow it down, set it up. That's a foul. It was. Marshall got away with one, and then he just chucks it oh. into the backcourt. Tryon can't get there, and it's going to go way of McNeese. It should be McNeese. McNeese, yeah. Nobody touched it on as Marshall tried to recover, and Marshall now holding his right arm. He just went off with a hamstring or a knee injury of some kind. Now he's holding his right arm as he tried to save that ball, going out of bounds. Tough kid, though. I was going to say, Coach, I don't think you really want to sub Marshall out right now. I don't think he wants to be out either. He's just going to play through the pain. All the type of players that you want. Yeah. Ready to go out here and fight and tough it out all the way through. Free throw. At some point, you got to just trust your jump shot and shoot the free throw. It's a little too much there by Francois. Rebounded by Marshall and the Bulldogs. Marshall now with eight rebounds and 12 points. And here he is with a three. <clears throat> that right arm looks fine to me. Oh, yep, got away with another non-foul call there. Got a double high screen. Oh, throw it up. Medley Bacon tried to slip. Now he's, Marshall is on. Got Marshall trying to hold a 6'11". That's going to. Medley Bacon has to be careful. That's uh, on the verge of a delay of game. Yeah, tapping the ball out. Their chance to tie it up. Right now, I just was about to speak on it. Right now, while Tryon is on the bench, McNeese is going to have to go inside to Medley Bacon. But just as I speak of it, Tryon subs right back in the game. 68 tight, 8.08 left in the second, second half. Try on another three, too much, bounces out. Coach, I'm just looking at Glover. He's just so quick on the dribble. It's so hard when he gives you the hesitation or, or the head fake, you gotta, you gotta honor it. That creates all the open space he needs. Mm. Good defense there, no call as the Bulldogs recover the miss. Cooper Kafis dro drove in, ends up on the ground, but Slow no down, call there up. either. Slow. Oh. Set it up, set it up. Here's a deep shot from Francois. He can't get it to go, rebounded by the Bulldogs. Right now, coach, both ways. If it's not a layup, I don't want it. Well, it's 0-0 on the scoreboard right now, so. It's too much back and forth. Right now, it's just a track meet. We're just running back and forth just to go baseline to baseline. If we're not getting buckets or shot attempts, it's kind of a waste. So I want everything right now to be going towards the bucket. Here you see the last play. Cooper Kafis tried to get his defender to go in the air. Instead, got tripped up, and he's going to go to the line. Or, I'm sorry, the ball will be on the floor, on the baseline. When we come back, it's all tied up at 68. And here's a word from our sponsor.
coming out of the break. It'll be Bulldog Ball on the baseline. Here's Glover. That's a foul. That's what he was going after, too. He wanted it. That one was a legit foul. Nice pass. And then here's a legit foul on the other end. This one going to be committed by Jane Campbell. Yeah, you're right, Coach. It was right in front of us, and Glover didn't get this call. Now you see... Glover came down and tried to block it from behind, which is what you're supposed to do. Campbell, meanwhile, ran right through his defender, and now Jonathan Massey is going to... Now subbing back into the game right now, Coach, is your magnet. The Marshall Magnet. Massey knocks down one of the free throws. Oh. Massey intercepts it, but on the way to pull in the ball, steps out of bounds. Glover able to lose his defender, Lewis, on the inbound. And now pulls up at the elbow and gets it to drop. Coach, you were talking about shooting those free throws. Glover does it right there. Gets right to that free throw line and puts it up. Oh, oh, good defensive effort by Marshall and Kafis, but Marshall just couldn't hold on to the ball as it trickled out of his hands and went out of bounds. Coach, they're going to have to utilize that pivot. When you get trapped, you got to pivot. Swing and swipe and pivot. Marshall here now kicks the ball out of bounds. Right now they need a uh, some type of press break that's going to work. Now with Marshall on the ball, it's very difficult to get this ball in. I love that effort too, jumping jacks from Marshall and straight down to the lane to find somebody to box out. And that gives the ball back to the Bulldogs. Oh. Cooper Kafis was going to shoot, but he couldn't hold on to it. Now it's back to the top of the key to Glover. Gets an on-ball screen from Tryon, calls him off. Glover then drives in, floats it up. Just a little short off the front of the rim. We're at six minutes to go. It's a one-point oh. game, 70-69. Bulldogs intercept it again, and Glover gets it to go off the glass this time. Whoever's bringing the ball up the floor, you're going to have to know that the defense is not going to give up as soon as you blow by. They're coming to poke it from behind. That's that chase and recover mentality. Yes, sir. Oh, bad, bad, bad look. Oh, they got a foul call. Mm. That foul call is going to go against Jacob Tryon. That's his fourth. So now their big man is one foul away from sitting the rest of this game. We're at five and a half minutes left. Oh, that's over the back. He's going to get the grab. Got him on the shoulder. Yep, Marshall and Bacon, Medley Bacon, were fighting for that loose ball there, but Marshall was behind him and pulled him down instead of getting in front of him and boxing out. It's Marshall's third foul. Mm. 
Bradley Bacon, tough night for scoring as this one rattles out. Quick trigger shot from Campbell, can't get it to go. Five minutes left in the ball game. McNeese needing the bucket with this possession. 0 for 4 in the last four possessions. Medley Bacon called for the foul here. All he was trying to do was sit down and seal and get position, but the baseline official thought it was something else. And we're gonna have a full timeout called from Sanford. Seventy-two sixty-nine is your score right now, and we will be back after this message from the island. Watching Emerald Coast TV. We're bringing you the 2021 Emerald Coast Classic right now. A good one between Sanford and McNeese. Four minutes, 49 seconds. We've got a three point ball game. The Bulldogs bringing the ball up right now. Coach, right now, playing the numbers games. Sanford. 90% from the free throw line. 18 out of 20. That's keeping them in control, being able to score when the clock's not running. Kafis and Campbell both try three-point attempts for the Bulldogs, can't get it to go, and it's tipped out by the Cowboys. Also, you have McNeese with 24 turnovers. We always talk about the turnover game. And 24 is exceeding the number that you really want. Jermaine Marshall taking it inside, hitting the ground, and he's going to go to the line to shoot two for the, Cal uh, for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs now 19 of 21 from the foul line. Make that 20 of 22. Tough shot there. He's been kind of quiet here in the last bit of the second half. Right now, Bulldogs on a 6-0 run in the last 230. Stay on the ground. Sanford in no rush to put the ball up, using all of the shot clock. Deep three. Doesn't hit anything but the backboard from Cardet, and it'll be a shot clock violation. Oh. 
Got another timeout on the floor. Both teams, two, two more timeouts apiece. We're going to take a quick break our, ourselves. at 74-69, Sanford up. See a live look in of Oregon State's men's basketball team gonna come take the floor here after this game. We got a three o'clock matchup between the Oregon State Beavers and the Penn State Nittany Lions. We hope you stay and watch that game with us. Those were the two, two teams that lost last night. The championship game this evening at six will be between the LSU Tigers and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. But right now we got ourselves a battle, final three and a half minutes of the contest and it's 74-71. McNeese keeps trying to chip away and stay close to the Sanford Bulldogs. That was Miles Lewis taking the ball coast to coast, going for the layup. Crowd getting a little bit bigger here. As the day progresses, getting a little bit louder as well. Glover, step back shot. Jeez. That's a tough bucket. He's a fun little point guard to watch, man. Oh, wow. And a great steal by Campbell down to Cooper. And the Bulldogs get four quick points just like that. Composure right now is about your composure. Got to be able to hold it together when times get tough. The skip pass is available. Skip pass. And there it was. Right to, oh. Shoemate saved by Taylor. Two on the oh. shot clock. He doesn't see it, and it's a violation. He should have put it up when he had Marshall in the air. Could have drew the foul. But there, too, you've been hearing it all, all game. The bench is counting down the shot clock, and McNee's bench has gone kind of cold, a little quiet. They've had a lot of energy. Because they are one for seven in the last possessions. Five turnovers in the last 436. Glover, again, mm. jumps up and knocks it down. Glover is just feeling himself. Coach, I caught him after the game yesterday when we were leaving, and he had told me, it's just when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And right now, he's feeling it. Let's see him coming off the bench, or onto the bench here, locked in. 20 point, 22 points for Glover, leads all players on the floor right now. And again, he has not missed a free throw since he has been here in this arena. Coach, yep. the young fella told me is, when they can't stop me, I can't be stopped. I can't, I can't, I can't argue with that. No. Right now, tonight, today, and last night, yesterday, I haven't seen him stopped. You may find something that may uh, alter his path, but no one has seemed to be able to stop this young fella. But what I love, too, is if he can't get to the rim, he has the ability to stop and pop. His jump shot is nice, and he has nice court vision also. And if you know you can take it in, maybe get a foul, and you're going to go to the line, you're going to be automatic, there's another weapon. I mean, how are you going to stop a guard like that? He can hit you. He scores from all three levels. 
I'm hoping if, if our, one of our point guards out there is listening and watching, I hope you're watching number zero, number zero. If you have the quickness, the advantage, go to the bucket. Play under control. Be able to stop and pop. Be able to come to that jump stop and, and, and drop a dime. Marshall picks up his fourth foul here. It's going to send Medley Bacon to the line. Just a tough offensive night for Medley Bacon. Misses both free throws. It's 80-71. We're approaching a minute and a half of the game. McNeese needs a stop and a quick bucket. Here's Glover being double teamed. Marshall tries to cut through. Can't get it. They got to be able to finish. Here's Taylor. Can't oh. finish off the glass, but there's Marshall coming back down rim to rim. So this is the double M magnet. Glover taking oh. it himself. No call. Wow. My goodness, he got smacked in the air. Wow, that's a lot of contact. As he looks at the official. And the official just walks on by. Man, <laughs> I felt that one up here. And I'm not sure why that wasn't called, but here you see the replay. Glover gets past his man. And Lewis goes straight up in the air and comes down on his mm. face. Wow. Sometimes it just surprises me when you're five feet away and just don't make the call. That but needs they've to been be made making that call all night. Yes. Yeah. And that was the most obvious of all the calls. Yes. Yeah. Well, I will say that's two that Glover did not get. Right. When he made that shot, they smacked him on the three. And then that layup right there. It's not fair, too, when you're 13 of 13 last night, nine for nine tonight from the foul line. Let the young man go, oh, wow. Out of bounds. You couldn't have been more open on that. Jeez. Just threw it a little too hard for his Kafis. Seven-point deficit. 62 seconds left in and the contest. And now you give McNeese the ball back and a chance to get some hope. Oh, backcourt. Unforced turnovers. Composure. Right now, Sanford about to spread the floor. Swinging the ball. Double M with the possession. They're going to need the ball back. They got a foul. Glover's not the guy you want to foul, but. Oh. Here's Campbell, deep three, does not go. Strong rebound from Massey, but it's taken away from Kafis. You've got a foul, yep. Let's see if Glover can stay perfect from the line. Ten for ten. 
This young fella has ice water in his veins at that free throw line. Eleven for eleven. Has not missed yet from the foul line. Twenty-four points for number zero. And is that twenty-four points from the line last night and today? Mm. You say it was thirteen for thirteen yesterday. That foul's on Jermaine Marshall. That's going to be his fifth, so he's going to be coming out. Double M did his job today. The Marshall Magnet. M and M. Moss misses his first free throw. Eight-point game, 20.9 seconds on the clock. McNeese going to need a steal or a quick foul. Moss subbed out. Shoemate comes in for McNeese. Right now, nine fouls both ways. Shoemate picks up the foul there. That's going to be his fifth, so he's out for McNeese. 18.2 ticks left on the clock. And I know Glover's stat of 11 of 11 today is great, but the all-around free throw performance from the Bulldogs, 23 of 25, shooting 92% thus far. That one rattles out, but still shooting over 90% for the game. Very impressive for Sanford. Here's a deep corner three, rattles out. <coughs> Strong rebound by Massey. Ah. Oh. That's tough too. Jacob Tryon just using his length to secure the block. It's gonna be his fifth foul, however. He's been trying to figure it out all, all game long. Bulldogs, all they need to do is get the ball in or secure this rebound, and that is pretty much it. Six point nine seconds. Massey hits his first free throw. Rattles out, rebounded here. That should have been a foul, no call. Not and enough time left. That's gonna be it. 83-75 is gonna be your final. Good fought battle between both teams, but Samford comes out on top and will now move to five and one on the year. I enjoy watching both of these teams. I, I hope, you know, we, we wish them best of success going forward with the rest of their season. Glover, story of the game, 24 points, 11 from 11 from free throw. Never missed in this, this arena. Six for 15 from the field also. And a strong game for him. And Marshall had a team high of 12 rebounds. Miles Lewis leading the Cowboys with 20 points and eight rebounds as well. Well, that'll do it here from game two on game day number two. Next up at three o'clock, we hope you join us. We got the big boys, Oregon State Beavers are gonna take on the Penn State Nittany Lions and we're gonna have that for you right here on Emerald Coast TV, presented by the island on Okaloosa Island. We'll see you soon. Game three coming up.